All right, so this is episode five of the Strangers Celtic podcast. I guess technically it's six if you count the one where I quizzed my wife on the names of the Celtics players. Um, so I had big plans for this podcast. I was going to bring on a guy who goes by the name of Tar Heels 23 on Celtics blog. I've been talking to this guy for years online, and I found out that in the last year or so, he somehow has become one of the number one Kyrie Irving haters. And I was excited to talk to him and find out like what happened and maybe talk some sense into him. But the last three days, I can't get a hold of him. Like he's been ghosting me. I think he's embarrassed that Kyrie's on this tear right now and he's been, you know, hiding. So had to call an audible. Haven't talked to Scott Scott from episode one in over a month. He's a fan favorite and he's super pissed off about Gordon Hayward. So it seems like a good time to bring him on. So literally about like 10 minutes ago, I got a PM from Brutal Gash, uh, who hosts the Outstanding Celtics Reddit podcast. And he was asking if I was available last minute to fill in as a replacement guest on their podcast, which I would have loved to done. Like those guys are great. I did it once before. But they were planning to record their podcast at the exact same time that I had planned to record Scott Scott. And Scott Scott's a very difficult guy to get a hold of. He's super hard to schedule. Like, that guy's out there making moves and stuff. I try to avoid posting these uh, podcasts at the same time as the Celtics Reddit podcast. For one, like I don't want to step on their toes. They've been doing this for longer and they're doing a great job. And two... Like, if given a choice, why would you listen to mine over theirs? Like, they're doing an awesome job. So I usually post mine on uh, Sundays uh, or Mondays, and they usually post theirs on Wednesdays. But, you know, the, the Warriors game was exciting. We're all kind of pumped about it. So uh, what that means is that when I post this, there's a really good chance that it's going to be going head-to-head with Reddit's number one Celtic podcast, which means that I don't think anyone's going to be listening to this one, and Scott Scott and I can pretty much talk about whatever we want. You ever, like, try flipping through the channels during the Super Bowl? It's like a bunch of weird like infomercials and stuff because nobody's watching. That's what this episode's going to be like. Um, but seriously, if you are enjoying this content, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. So this whole thing is an experiment for me. I'm not getting anything out of this. It's just fun. Um, I've said it before. I don't have any delusions of this being successful. I'm just kind of getting a kick out of it. Uh, and nobody's flat out told me that my content sucks. So you know, I have a bunch of ideas for NBA videos and I'm just trying to build out this YouTube channel stuff, right? It's been a learning experience. So one of the reasons why people are always begging for subscribers on YouTube, in addition to just getting some positive reinforcement is because there's certain uh, YouTube features that don't unlock until you reach certain subscriber thresholds. And a big one of those is uh, monetization, for example. So like you can't monetize your videos until you have a thousand subscribers. I have nowhere near that many. I don't expect that I ever will. But it's kind of cool to get some subscribers here and there. I was telling a buddy of mine and he told me that a lot of the big YouTubers, they, they actually just buy subscribers. And he's like, just buy subscribers, man. I guess they like they fake it until they make it. And then they, uh, you know, it kind of snowballs from there. But I'm like, dude, I don't want to do that. Like, I, I want to like, I just want to have fun. I want to see what's happening. Like, I, I've got all these cool subscribers I'm getting, like Yabo Yates and Wicktoe 712 and Jimmy Doty and Aldo and Caleb. But these are real people, man. These are these are my people. So, honestly, any of you guys, Hagen, all you guys out there who's uh, been subscribing to my channel, I do appreciate it. And uh, anyone else out there who's enjoying it, please like and subscribe. All right, so I probably shouldn't even talk about this, but <laughs> so. Uh, my last episode, episode four, I brought on Big Australian Boat, who is a guy who did not get along with me. Uh, he had once been suspended from Reddit for suggesting I kill myself, right? So spoilers, by the end of it, he and I made peace. Great conversation. But like the first 20 minutes of this podcast were dedicated to me trying to guess who he was. And I went through like my history of beefs that I've had with fellow Celtics fans over the years, over like 20 years, you know? And <laughs> so I posted that on the 14th. And two days later, after the video was no longer even getting any views, someone went into every one of my uh, podcasts from seven different Google accounts and gave them all dislikes. And I thought that was impressive. Like, I'm looking, no dislikes, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, <laughs> obviously from the same person, because it all comes from the same geographic location and the same device. Someone clearly dislikes me out there. So I posted about it on Reddit. I'm like, whoever you are out there, I'm not even mad. I want to, you know, come on my podcast. Talk to me about it. This is perfect for the Strangers Pod. You can tell me about how I hurt you. We can heal. It's like great, right? So the guy responds by creating a bunch more accounts to give me more dislikes. Look, man, I deserved it. It's fine. Uh... <laughs> I still think you should PM me and we should uh, we should get to the bottom of it. And also I was looking into it. Apparently YouTube counts likes and dislikes equally as engagement. So ultimately like you're, you're, you're helping the video by disliking it. So whoever you are out there and anyone else, please like, dislike my video, like my video. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you do hate my content, please tell me so I can have an excuse to stop making these. But in the meantime, here's Scott Scott. 
Hello, this is Gordon Hayward. <laughs> Scott, Scott, what's up, man? What's happening? It's been like a, over a month since we talked. Oh, man. How it flies, huh? Yeah, man. I've had to have, you know, placeholders for you while I waited for your triumphant return. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not very going to be very triumphant today, as mad as I am at old Gordo. <laughs> the people wanted you back, man. They were like, when's Scott Scott going to get back on here, you know? So it's good to, it's good to hear your, right. your sweet voice again. So it sounds like you're pissed about Gordon then, huh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's not my favorite player in the league. <laughs> so when we did our first podcast, obviously you were ready to trade him away for nothing. And then like a lot happened in the last in the last month. Like there was a point where I was like, oh, I can't wait to call up Scott Scott and and hear him yeah. apologize to Gordon Hayward like he had that 35 point game against the, the Wolves. Yeah, yeah, because because he can light up Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's absolutely horrible, man. Thirty million bucks, man. He's seriously like we just said. He's seriously not even as good as Evan Turner at four million dollars. Don't you remember Evan Turner was our go-to guy in the fourth quarter? You think he's worse than Evan Turner then? He's, he's. I mean, that last year that we had him. I mean, Brad Stevens really, you know, he he played up to the best of the guy's abilities. He didn't do anything he couldn't do, and he was pretty good for us, you know. Then we saw him get 17 million per for Portland, and we thought that that was overpaid until you met this guy Gordon Hayward at 30 million. He is paid quite a bit. So here's here's something I wanted to point out. So in uh, sure. his 12 games this month, here's his averages, all right? So he's okay. averaging 12.3 points, 3.9 rebounds, 3.3 assists. He's shooting 48% from the field, he's shooting 34% from 3, which is a little low, but it's decent. And that's all mm -hmm. in that's all in twenty four point six minutes per game. So his actual averages for this month aren't bad when you consider like the amount of minutes he's playing. If he mm -hmm. was playing okay, so over if you project that over like thirty six minutes, it's eighteen points, six rebounds, five assists. That's mm -hmm. that's kind of Gordon, isn't it? Well, what about the two point three um, yeast <laughs> infections he's having? <laughs> I mean, God, we say he he can't drive to the hole, man. Like he's so scared. It's just so sad, you know. It's like, like I, honestly, I was just I was just listening to Mike Tyson and uh, Customato and the hypnosis, and I'm thinking we might have to call up Danny and get this guy to a hypnotist if he's ever gonna <laughs> absorb contact at the rim and and one on somebody ever again. I think he needs the world's best hypnosis. So, so you're you're of the opinion that it's completely mental and that he's just. He, I mean, I, I know he can't jump like, like I said, he is fat. <laughs> I will say that he is very chunky now. He's not anywhere in the shape that he was when he was at the all-star farm with Utah. But, you know, it, like, yeah, it's definitely a lot more mental, man. He, he's, he's every time he's driving, it's to pass. He's so scared of contact and bumping into people. And I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a tough situation right now. If, if he can't take it, if everybody knows he's going to pass it going to the rim, I mean, that's not an ideal situation. It's, it's strange, though, because there are games where he seems to have a lot more explosiveness and a lot more aggression, and he seems to be taking it to the hoop. I mean, that Minnesota game obviously is against Minnesota, but he was like coasting around and like like he's walking on clouds and then the next game it's he's sluggish again he's not attacking the hoop with the same amount of aggression so like 24 days ago after that wolves game he said that his his ankle was still a little sore and that he expected that he'd be back to closer to normal around april or may so i mean do you do you think that like do you think it might just be that he is experiencing like on and off soreness as he continues to rehab like he is still rehabbing right are we talking about mental soreness <laughs> physical soreness so like you said that his verticality is not there yet no you're out on it you don't think it's at all physical at this point no i mean I, again i i like it is it's 20 percent easy maybe probably 30 percent but again it's just if he just had the custom auto mindset that he's a killer <laughs> <laughs> that you know what i mean come on mike if he had anything like if you remember Mick from Rocky, you know, like that's what he needs. He's like, can we hire a Mick from Rocky? <laughs> I really do wonder if it's limiting him because I mean, if I tried jogging after months of sitting on my ass, I experienced yeah. soreness in my knees, and then if I try to jog my normal five miles, it's not happening. I'm just I don't have the same yeah. amount of aggression. So I wonder if it's mm -hmm. like in his ankles every other day or whatever. Right? He rehabs. He's still rehabbing. He says. So I wonder if it's like he plays a great game. He feels like shit the next game, and he goes out there and he can't really do what he wants to do physically. So I'm still mm -hmm. I'm still having patience. You're out though. You're totally out. Oh, 
And that's the other thing. If we want to have patience, so if, if we if we're going to continue to play him 26 minutes a game and make him this big piece, I mean, for now, I just got to tell him, listen, Gordo, we need you to be. Remember how you're a knockdown shooter for like for most of your career? Well, we'd like to see that again. And if you're not going to be aggressive, taking the ball to the rim like you used to, jamming on people with two hands like elbows above the rim, if you're not going to be that guy, then please be Clay Thompson aggressive at the three point line. Like we need you to be aggressive somewhere. The guy scored two points. He gets paid $30 million. <laughs> if he scores 10 to 15 points, we probably win the game, you know? And I think that's a, there's a lot of truth in that. Like, we, we really need this guy. We're paying him 30, We're paying him to produce. And I know it's tough coming off an injury, but uh, like I said, we, I want to start playing this game of, like, guys I'd rather have than Gordon Hayward or guys I'd trade for him <laughs> straight up if it was possible. Because I'm looking at the Utah Jazz, and I'm like, God, I'd rather have four guys on him. Uh, than, than Gordon Hayward right now, if it were possible to trade him straight up. <laughs> Send him back to Utah. I'd rather have Gobert than him, obviously. I'd rather have Rubio than him. <laughs> I would rather have Joe Ingles, no question. And uh, who, who's in the, who's one more guy that I'm – oh, yeah, obviously Donovan Mitchell. I'll probably <laughs> trade Hayward for Donovan Mitchell. So that's four guys on Utah that I'd rather – and like I said, it's like who would have thought this is where we would be just a couple years ago when everybody was in, and this is what we're a little pissed off about too, is that we were sold Gordon Hayward. Now we used to go back and deliberate back and forth. You know, was Gordon Hayward really that much better than Jay Crowder at the time? That was, you remember how upset Crowder was when the, all the Boston fans were recruiting him, you know? And I was a little bit tired with Crowder at the time, but here we are now. And it's like, how about this? Like, Jay Crowder is basically right. It's like, you guys want to pay $30 million for this guy? <laughs> so you definitely would not want Jay Crowder over him right now because Crowder is shooting 39% from the field and 32% averaging 12 points. Of course, Crowder makes a hell of a lot less money. But <laughs> Well, yeah, well, yeah, with the money, it's not even a question, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, but when you're talking about talent for talent, yeah, Gordon's a little bit better, I guess. <laughs> okay, so here's what I want to say about this. So obviously the idea that he's not being aggressive is true. Kevin O'Connor posted on uh, Twitter yesterday saying that Gordon's passing the ball on 50% of his drives compared to in 2016, it was 33%. So he's obviously passing on his drives a lot more. He pointed out mm -hmm. that he's uh, drawing fouls on only 5% of his drives compared to 10% back in 2017. So obviously he's less aggressive, but do you think any part of this is also his role? Like, so <laughs> last night, he and Jalen Brown, who, like I just said, Hayward's numbers in the last month have been pretty decent in limited minutes. And mm -hmm. Jalen Brown has actually been playing really well the last month. Both those guys had 22 minutes last night. They're both, you know, not having a huge party offense. While Hayward's taking five shots, you have Marcus Morris and Marcus Smart taking a combined 23 shots and making seven of them. I mean, does any mm -hmm. part of you think that, like, we need to just put Hayward in the starting lineup and hope that he can figure it out and put Jalen Brown back in the starting lineup and hope he can figure it out and try to get back to this five-leaf clover offense that we were hoping we'd have all along? Excuse me, did you say put Hayward in the starting lineup? <laughs> yes, I'm advocating putting Hayward back in the starting lineup. <laughs> Have you been drinking at all tonight? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little oh bit. my God, what, what I think about Hayward, I think yeah, Hayward definitely needs less of a role. Is that what you're asking me? <laughs> How can we get this guy less of a role? If you if we could somehow start him and then not play him, um, yeah, I think that's maybe play him for four minutes in the beginning and then, you know, <laughs> tell him the rest. <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, I think he's kind of becoming a scapegoat. I mean, how much of him struggling oh. last night is him only taking five shots? Like, a few nights ago, my man, Jason Tatum, went 0 for 6, but I didn't freak out. Yeah. I'm like, he only took six shots in that game. Like, what are you going to do in a game where he only takes six shots? He goes 0 for 6. It's not the end of the world. Like, I know that Hayward wasn't the aggressive guy that we wanted him to be last night, but why is he taking five shots while Smart and Morris are taking a combined 23? Like, shouldn't well, that be some, isn't that partially the system? Like, shouldn't he be getting more minutes and more opportunities to be who he is? Well, first of all, um, you didn't freak out about Jason Tatum because he's good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and traditionally good players bounce back. Uh, it, it's these inconsistent, I mean, like I say, it, it, it's so tough, man. I mean, we'll never know what primo Gordon Hayward but I'll tell you what, in I I really like I'm a, such a Gordon Hayward Hayward. <laughs> I'm a hater. I'm such a Hayward hater. And I wasn't initially, but it, it's so odd. The first five minutes of last year when we were watching that game, 
I'm thinking to myself, I didn't like the feel of him out there right away. I, I got the sense right away that this guy was standing directly in front of Tatum and Brown's key to success. Yeah. I felt that right away. And when, when he got hurt, uh, again, like after the shock wore off, I was kind of like slightly relieved. I was like, oh, oh wow, They're like this is what I wanted. I want I wanted the young guys. And again, like Jalen Brown, I, this guy, is he still 21 years old, right? It's like we can't give this guy, like, any type of limited minutes. This guy's in probably the most incredible shape of, like, you know, he's in the top 1% of the league. Like, this guy needs to be 32 minutes a game, like, right now. And it, it really does bother me that Brown is getting slighted, even if it's six to eight minutes a game because of Hayward, again, because of money, because of Brad Stevens' relationship, which brings me to one other point, which was the last time the Celtics had such a blunder of a decision, this was even worse than Hayward, no doubt about it. What, what were like the biggest GM blunders that you can remember in the last, you know, 15 years or so? Well, the Celtics pre-Ainge, <laughs> pre-Ainge the Celtics obviously made a bunch of them trading away stars like Joe Johnson and Chauncey Billups for, you know, Rodney. The Rodney Rogers one comes to mind for me at least. Yeah, a fi- financially huge blunder. Like, holy shit, what do you got? <laughs> Why would you make that trade? Vin Baker? <laughs> Vincenzo! <laughs> Vincenzo it is, yeah, the, the barista at Starbucks. Yeah, exactly. Vinny Baker, man. And, like, what what does this have in common, Vin Baker with Gordon Hayward? If there's one, like, little common thread there, would you say there's anything? <laughs> well, Vin Baker was literally getting drunk at practice. I think that's a little bit different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he couldn't keep up with Gary Payton. They said Gary Payton was an animal, just strip clubs all night, cocaine, <laughs> bottles of Jack. Like, you could not stop Gary Payton. And Vin Baker, he used to drag him with him everywhere. And Vin Baker was like, Gary, I need sleep. <laughs> And he's like, no, you don't, Vin. What's the matter with you, buddy? So, you just... so yeah, Gary Payton's a legend. Vinny, so... not so much. But the one common thread there that there was, like I said, and I feel like this could be a big recipe for disaster when it comes to being a general manager. Okay, what's the what's the connection between Baker and Hayward? <laughs> okay, well, it's just buddy old pals. Brad Stevens, obviously, in his history. And then don't you remember, as soon as Chris Wallace traded for Vin, he was like, you know, He's having a lot of problems, but me and Vinny go way back. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> that, that's real. And I was like, I was like, Chris Wallace, are you serious? You, you guys go way back. You think that you think that when he gets back around New England and the old pals, that he's gonna he's gonna come twenty and ten again like the Milwaukee Bucks? So oh you're, my god! So did you see what? did you see the post on Celtics blog today uh, about an anonymous Warriors player who told Jeff Goodman that Gordon Hayward's a liability on both ends of the court? Yeah, yeah, I, I sent you that link. <laughs> yeah, right. Just, yeah. just in case, yeah, just in <laughs> okay. case. All right. Yeah, I was just exactly. Wow, that guy's music to my ears. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> that's probably someone trying to to you know light a fire. But um, you had sent me once. You asked me if Gordon Hayward and Brad's father son relationship is a problem. So I guess yeah. that's what you're getting at here is you think that the fact that he and Brad have this you know tremendous relationship together is holding back the entire team. Well, I, I say it's just a bad precedent. It's just. You know, this whole the whole Bill Belichick, the CEO line of thinking, like, you know, you have to treat everybody like an equal, and everybody kind of has to feel that, you know, the, the decisions that you're making are in the best interest of the franchise, right? So the Brett, like I said, the, the Gordon Hayward thing, man, this is my my little my little buddy from Indiana and Butler, and we had we had this dream, and we fell just short in college, and you know, and and like I said, and he gets thirty million bucks. Like if I'm Jalen Brown, like I said, I'm literally so depressed every day that this guy makes five times more than I do. I mean, did you see Hayward getting blown by last night? Like somebody brought that up. Like at the guard spot. I mean, he can't guard anybody at the three-point line right now. I mean, anybody his height and under is just blowing by him. Like, he's standing still. It's it's just like – and I remember Gordon Hayward covering Kevin Durant, you know, when, his last season with the Jazz, and I, and I remember thinking, wow, this guy's actually a decent matchup for Kevin Durant. He was actually contesting, you know, an inch away on the threes, and he looked like a decent matchup physically. Whereas now it's just, I mean, defense, like I said, it looks like he's, he's standing in cement shoes. It really does a lot of the times. It's pretty pretty tough to watch. It is, but then there's other games where he there's just a definite difference in the way he moves. And that's what I mean. I keep going back to this idea that he's still experiencing soreness through his rehab. But you bring up Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is having an awesome month. He's shooting 47%. He's shooting 43% from three. He's averaging 13 mm-hmm. points. He's only averaging 24 minutes a game. So back uh, on my podcast with Big Australian Boat, I brought up this idea of trading high on uh, Marcus Morris. In the seven games since then, Marcus Morris has averaged 9.6 points with 33% shooting and 26% from three. 
So, I mean, are you at the point now where you're thinking maybe it's time to kind of move Morris out, if not for Hayward, at least for Brown? Get Brown back into the starting lineup, get some of those minutes to him? Well, first of all, you know whose fault it is that Marcus Morris' numbers are slipping, right? <laughs> is it mine for jinxing him again? <laughs> it's uh, Gordon Hayward. He's just like, <laughs> taking up all the minutes. He's just, this, you know, he's just fucking up Morris's mojo. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all <laughs> Hayward's fault. He's become the yeah, scapegoat for completely. everything. Yeah, <laughs> completely. And, Ky- I, I, and I got to apologize to Kyrie. Kyrie was so right about that last second pass when uh, they should have gave the ball to Horford and then to Kyrie <laughs> at half court. Like, what was, what the fuck was Hayward thinking, giving it to Tatum? Like, obviously, he's making the wrong decision. Oh, man. Just <laughs> everything's Hayward's just, fault. Oh, man. At any, point like in the last, at any point in the last month where you're like, all right, Hayward's all right. He's going to be okay. Or you've just been out on him the entire time. You're like, 35 points, 35 points in my ass, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, 30, no, 35, but that's literally the only game where, like, he got somewhat of a pass. I was like, you know what? The guy's not a horrible human being. <laughs> Come on, man. He had uh, so Toronto. He had 18 points, 61 percent shooting. He had 18 points against the Cavs a couple games ago. I mean, he's when he's getting the opportunities, he seems to be pretty decent. But uh, you know, Smart's last four games, he's been struggling as well. He's back down to 27 percent for three, 31 percent from the field. Obviously, Morris's last seven games, maybe that's just a temporary dip, but he's down to terrible, you know, efficiency as well. Even though those, those guys have been huge, we're still at our fifth seed. And there is kind of a ceiling on how great this team can be with those guys starting, I think. I'm kind of mm-hmm. in the mindset I'm thinking, like, I know that Hayward, I know you're super out on him. But, you know, he's had good games, and I kind of just want him to be in this role. Like, I don't know if him taking five shots off the bench in 22 minutes, there's really much of a, a ceiling on what he can do. So I'm kind of yeah. thinking, like, I kind of just want both him and Brown, both in the starting lineup, as we always intended, and just hope that it works and i hope that's what brad does after an all-star break is like all right stop screwing around with this marcus marcus starting lineup let's get our guys in there and hope that they figure it out by the you know by the playoffs marcus i'm shooting 43 percent from three morris though he is he, but he, he has is, been really good he has been really yeah. good but his last seven games is down to 26 percent, and maybe that's just a fluke maybe it'll be great tomorrow but well i, well, I told i told you about guys with uh seven game stretches where they're not playing so good but I, but I do know the fact that Morris is good that's why I'm not really worried about him he is good yeah. but uh as far as being serious with Hayward for a minute what, what I would do with him coaching strategy wise at this point is uh you know who's really playing back a point we really like Rosier he's really having a tough year I would just I want the ball in Gordon Hayward's hand when Kyrie is not uh playing points so basically I'm trying to make Hayward the backup point and actually use his strengths yeah I get that I think him him pay, playing 30 minutes off the bench as the primary ball handler and said Rozier would probably go a long way of helping him. The funny yeah. thing about Rozier is on the 20th, uh, you know, everyone's out on Rozier. I made a joke on the 20th um, in the midst of one of our games that I was buying up all of Rozier's stock, just like I bought up all of Jalen Brown's stock when it was an all-time low. I, I'm the mm. I'm the last person holding on to Rozier Island, and then a couple of days later in the midst of that game where he was eight for eight and had 23 points in the first half, I said, all right, I'm selling all my stock. So I sold yeah. it for a, a still, I sold it for a small profit, <laughs> but uh, I'm at a point now where he just had two points a year game. And I don't know. I still, I'm still not even out on Rosier either. I think that I still have a little bit of hope that that guy can be a contributor as well, but <sighs> scary Terry, they need a new nickname for him. <laughs> I mean, that is the problem, man. That's, that's the problem that we have right now. We have guys who can do it. They can play, but not in limited roles. And it's really hard to yeah. get in that rhythm with limited roles. So, like, again, same thing. If Rozier, what did he take? He went, he took four shots last night. You're not going to be able to do much with four shots. Hayward took five shots. Do you think that's because these guys just aren't aggressive? Or is it just like there's not that many shots to go around? Kyrie took 27 shots. Horford took 15. Tatum took 15. Yeah. Like, all these guys are taking shots. They can't all take 20 shots. Yeah, Kyrie could have been a little bit more unselfish, I think. <laughs> like to see 27 shots. We like to spread, you know. But G- Gordon's got to be more aggressive, man. Like I said, we we pay the guy to be aggressive to score. So Terry Rozier, I know he's he's about as street, street, streaky as it gets. If you play in major minutes, he is going to get into his groove. But again, Rozier Rozier's just kind of a lost cause. That's why he probably should get spot minutes in favor of Hayward for a while. Because, like I said, Hay- Hayward's a part of our future. We don't even know what's going on with Terry. We- Terry, we're just hoping we can package him for Anthony Davis somehow. <laughs> yeah, that was sign a, and trade him. Sign and trade, yeah. So yeah, hey, was well, a... one, well, one more, one more though. Um, uh, Hayward trade. Would you do just hypothetically? Would you give rid of him for Ryan Anderson and Josh Jackson? Ryan Anderson's got one year left at like twenty million dollars after this year. 
And like, if we had to give them a first too, just oh, to take man. on that scrub Hayward. <laughs> I keep hearing these crazy deals. Of uh, Bill Hondo messaged me, said, "Would you give up Hayward's contract plus the Kings picked for Blake Griffin because Detroit's struggling? Blake Griffin's signed on for four four years, making like thirty eight million dollars, but he's playing amazing, and uh, he was ready to move on from from him. You wouldn't for Ryan for Ryan Anderson. I mean, the thing and is, Josh Jackson. Josh Jackson. My thought process on that is this: like, I still am holding out hope." that Hayward after the all-star break finally goes on a groove. Like maybe his soreness subsides. He's, he says April, May. So let's give him till April, May. Like, is there really, is there, is there really any reason why we would want to salary dump him now as opposed to the summer? Like if that's really yeah, what we want to do because of his giant salary <laughs> to get an expiring contract. But the thing with the expiring contract is what, what good is that going to do for our team? We're already over the cap regardless mm. If anything, you can use Hayward's contract as like salary filler in an in, in Anthony Davis deal or something, right? Like there's really no reason to do it right now, I don't think. I think we should probably just wait, hope that he becomes a star by next season. and <laughs> Hope that he becomes a star. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, hope that he becomes a oh. star by next season. He's shown flashes. Like let's hope that he shows the consistency by next season. And then... Oh, can, can he just train to be J.J. Redick? That's all I want <laughs> out of him at this point. Please, like we don't need to... You don't need to handle the ball, just... Can you run off the screen and shoot a three? But that comes back to the system, man. That comes back to how the team is using him right now. So <laughs> this is another thing that you brought up with me, which is super sacrilege. I'm going to bring it up, though. You had said, mm-hmm. would you trade? <laughs> you said, would you trade Brad Stevens to the Clippers yes. for, for Doc Rivers and two unprotected first? I'm not at the yeah. point where I'm actually thinking that any of this is Brad's fault. I just think that mm-hmm. you know, obviously Brad has a history of getting the most out of overachieving teams. And now we have a team that's underachieving. But uh, you really think that any of this is his fault? <laughs> Yeah, and he, yeah, but he also has a short history of not being able to uh, manage the biggest egos like Gordon Hayward <laughs> and Kyrie. So that, that's why we need to bring in the hero, Doc Rivers, the underappreciated Doc that could handle malcontents like Ray John Rondo and KG, <laughs> Ray Ray, <laughs> Jesus Shuttlesworth. So we're, we're, building, you know? we're building a premise that Brad Stevens has, is a spectacular coach if he has a bunch of borderline starters. But once you get yeah, him a bunch of stars, give him, give him a five-seven point guard and Jay Crowder, <laughs> guy's awesome. Avery Bradley, <laughs> the guy can get it done. But man, you give him you give him a couple all stars, and it all falls apart. So Brad Stevens for Doc Rivers and two unprotected first, and they're Clippers first, right? I would trust in Danny that he would do it far enough into the future. Like he'd be like, okay, I want you two thousand twenty-six pick, <laughs> and I want, and he would just somehow time it. Where Brad Stevens got fired and everything fell apart, and boom, <laughs> number one overall pick, unprotected. Yep, D- Danny, I can see it happening. As long as Brad Stevens is coaching nobodies, they're going to win 50 to yep. 60 games. <laughs> yep, yep. And th- but then eventually, uh, that Steve Ballmer guy is going to get tired of Stevens and his, <laughs> and his overachieving bullshit. And he's just going to can him. Oh, did, did you actually see Blake Griffin deny Steve Ballmer the handshake? I didn't see that. No, I missed that. If you if you Google it, um, he he went over. He's like Blake. He went over, just made sure he got his attention. Big smile, walking over to him, and then Blake actually turns on the trot to jog away from him, and it was great. He just completely ran right by him, and then Steve Ballmer was just blushing. He just felt like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing the post right now. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, Scott, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get completely reamed for this podcast because now we're actually attacking uh, Brad Stevens as well. <laughs> It's a good. Th- it's a good thing that I found out before this that the Celtics Reddit podcast is being recorded at the same time. So we're going head to head with Reddit's number one podcast. Nobody's gonna be listening to this, so we're all set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. No, I mean obviously we're not firing Brad quite yet, but you know, if, if this deal's on the table right now. We just want to. Dump- and, and that's just back to one more point with Gordon Hayward. How is Gordon Hayward really a thirty million dollar man? Is is he really worth that type of money? And um. We, we said that Danny Ainge and the Celtics, we were being sold on guys like Kevin Durant, Paul George, and Jimmy Butler. Like, that was the tier that we were going after for years. You know, maybe, oh, we're going to make this trade, we're going to make this trade, never quite happened. And then we got kind of sold the Gordon Hayward package. Like, oh, you know, like, this guy's an all-star. He's 22 points, five rebounds, three and a half assists. He's, he's right on that level with Jimmy Butler, Paul George. We were being kind of sold that, and I don't know if that was entirely true. Well, I mean, a healthy Gordon Hayward was a star player, right? Like, he was allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> he did have at least one star season, 
Yeah, I just, but 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 although again he he walked away and was replaced with a rookie and and they really didn't miss much of a beat on, on so, Utah. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, he was really built up in that system. And and you and like you said, I mean, as far as role, the guy was being catered to the whole time. I mean, he was there, you know, whatever mini LeBron James or however you want to call. It. I mean, he was the best thing Utah had, and they slowly brought him along until the point where he kind of peaked. I guess around around 26. He peaked when, when when we got him, and then, oh, man, I should, he should have stayed in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just actually pointed out on Reddit today that uh, Hayward's career stats compared to Tatum's. So if you just look yeah. at their entire career, Tatum's career stats are actually better. He's They're both averaging 15 points. Um, Tatum's averaging six rebounds compared to Hayward averaged four. And Tatum's shooting splits, 46%, 41%. 84% are better than Hayward's career shooting splits of 44%, 36%, 82%. But I mean, still Hayward in his last season, in Utah was phenomenal. And if we were getting that guy here, that changes the entire outlook of this team. I mean, we were expecting that we were going to have an all-star here and you know, obviously he's going over five against golden state, which is not ideal, but I still wonder if that is something that's based on the way he's being utilized. And if he was in a starting lineup right now, getting 12, 13 shots, would he look better nightly, you know? If you just remove Haywood from the equation this year in his 26 minutes, then we can give an extra five, six minutes to Tatum. We can push his numbers where he's about 16. and I think we can push him to 20 points and seven boards just by giving him some of the, you know, Gordon's lost minutes. Jalen Brown, same thing. We can give him another eight minutes a game. He can push his numbers up about three points and a rebound. We, we can literally get the – like, it's not like Jalen Brown can't give more. <laughs> you see what I'm right, saying? He's right. 21 years. We actually – I, I really want – uh, Jalen to be kind of a and again we should actually use him more again just in playmaking roles I know he's a horrible playmaker but he needs to get better like like Jalen really needs to get better for us to take a championship leap you know yeah I keep going back to the idea of, of consolidating I mean we do have so many guys that need shots right now so I posted this um, let's see 12 days ago I was pointing out our shot distribution and it was interesting to me that we had Kyrie taking about 17 shots per game. The next mm-hmm. closest was 13 for Tatum. And then you look at the Warriors who we just played. Steph takes 20. Durant takes 19. Clay takes 19. All three of those guys were taking more shots than our best player and are taking significantly more shots than our second best player. So since I made that post, that was again 12 days ago, uh, mm-hmm. five games has happened for Kyrie. And he's now taken 19, 21, 19, 19, and 27 shots which is, it makes sense for him. Like, that's what our star player should be taking. You said you didn't like him taking 27 shots, but like an average of 21 shots per game for the only guy on the team who's consistently playing like a star makes sense. In his last five games, he's averaging 31 points with 56% shooting and 51% from three. That's what I want to see from Kyrie. Oh, but then, Kyrie's just been on fire. I mean, he's, he's been like on fire. 60% from the field. I mean, come on. But that's what he should be doing on a nightly basis. Like, I don't think he should be taking 17 shots. He should be taking around 21. And I think Tatum should be taking more like 16, 17. He's taking 13. It's, it's just like this team right now. We have all these guys who are taking like 10, 11 shots. And I know the idea is that we're having this kumbaya team where we share the ball and everyone's happy. But it never really works. It never really works, man. We need to have... Every team that has ever won a championship has multiple stars that they lean on. And... Yeah, shout out to Kumbaya just for being a great song. <laughs> <laughs> Calms me down every time. All right, man. So anyways, oh. we, we won we won five in a row, and we lost by four points to Golden State. It's not the end of the world. We're doing pretty well, but I do think that we're going to get better. Just exa- exactly where we thought we were. We are who we thought we were. <laughs> it's just like we're not as good as the Warriors, but we're pretty close. <laughs> I don't think we were who we thought we were. <laughs> What's that? We were, de- we were definitely not who we thought we were in the sense that we would have four or five all-stars playing at that level, but we're pretty but, but good. You know, we're but pretty you know good. what? Even, even regardless, though, regardless of where I thought my guys were going to be, I still thought we were not going to beat the Warriors. <laughs> yeah, so that's true. Just, that's true. You, I, I you never... Know, so, but a buddy of mine, yeah, I, was, how, I was watching a game of a friend, and he's like, playing the Warriors is like going to the casino. You might be up for a little while and feel good about yourself, but after 48 mm-hmm. minutes, they're going to beat you. Like, Yeah. I mean, Odds are stocked against you, my I, friend. I've never thought that we could beat the Warriors. I know that's like, people hate hearing that because it just seems so defeatist, and we're all kind of collectively having this state of denial that like we could contend with 
a team like the Warriors, but the Warriors are unbeatable. That team's the most stacked of all time. You're not going to beat them. Like the team. Let's just say this though: if we did somehow trade uh, Durant for Gordon Hayward, because we know he kind of almost came here, not really, but almost. Yeah. Do you think like yet? Yes. Do you think we're better than them today with Durant and then without Durant? So you swap Gordon Hayward for Durant. Or just actually just throw Gordon Hayward in the trash and just give us Durant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I think that would be a completely yeah, man. I mean Durant is <laughs> Durant's probably one of the greatest pure scorers in NBA history. I mean he really but is. He is the game changer right now. As the NBA stands, he's the game changer. Like again, like if, if Durant's on the Celtics, we probably are the best team in the league. Durant can go he's like one of the few people in the league that I see like him. And LeBron, really, that I could see going to pretty much any team and turning them into a, at least a 45 to 50 win team just by themselves. It doesn't matter who's on that yep. team. Yeah, I mean, you put him and Kyrie together, they're going to be with Horford, with Horford, with Horford, with and Tatum, Tatum. With absolutely, Brown. absolutely. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, best team in the league, right? I mean, you would still have but, Steph and Clay, who are the two greatest shooters of all fucking time, like and Draymond, <laughs> who's way on stock is way down, and old man Cousins. But Draymond's the same kind of thing. Like he, because the Warriors have um, three guys taking twenty shots, Draymond's taking like five because it's just like, well, we're going to give all the shots to our best players, is what you, <laughs> which he probably should do if you have guys that talented. Yeah, and, and he's the worst shooter out of all of them by far. True, true. It's it's interesting though. I'm just saying, yeah, Kevin Durant, he is the balance. Uh, he is the balance of power in the league. That's why it was just so absurd that he had to go to Golden State, the greatest regular season team in NBA history, the balance of power has to go there. That just seems wrong. <laughs> it, it does It does kind of break the league temporarily. I mean, as long as he's there, it breaks the league. I, I still think he's probably going to leave, though, for that reason. I just don't think that he has um, – if I'm in Durant's shoes, I don't respect myself right now. <laughs> like, he can pretend like he, these achievements are meaning something to him, but I don't think they are. I think he's going to eventually want to go somewhere he prove that he can actually do something and earn a championship or earn some kind of victory. Because I don't feel like anything he does in Golden State is earned. It just feels like, great, congratulations. You bandwagon onto a 73-win team. All right, and I want to play this little game here. We're just going to play, if if this was possible, a salary and all that, would you take this guy over Gordon Hayward right now? <laughs> and, and you got to keep in mind that we are getting rid of his salary. Okay. Okay, so would you give him up for Otto Porter Jr.? I'm going to be knowing all of these. I, I'm the wrong person to be asking this because I'm still holding out hope that Gordon Hayward is just right around the corner going to be that guy who can get 25 points oh, a night. Oh, come on with it, please. How about Miles Turner? Would you give him up for Miles Turner? No, no. I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm on Hayward Island. Everyone else is oh, out of him. Oh, my God. You, Listen. We're talking We're talking seven foot four and a half wingspan, shot blocker. Miles this guy's 80% from the free throw line. Miles Turner, 15 Eight a night with a couple blocks? You know, that's intriguing. He is 22 years old, and he is averaging uh, some decent numbers, but I don't know. And, and I know, have I faith. know your heart have, have faith in Gordon. percent free throw shooter. What's that? <laughs> have faith in come Gordon on. Hayward. No, come on. Not for Miles Turner. You can't have faith. <laughs> come on. That's, that's like, that's a no-brainer. Come on. You know you know, you would do that. Come on. But I'm looking at Miles Turner. You, know, you know, Miles Turner's got some nice hair. Gordon Hayward's got some nice hair. I want to ask you a question. Do you think that, <laughs> yeah. uh, do you think NBA scrubs like, Yabuselli should have vanity haircuts, or is that got to be something once you start to earn it on the court? Yeah, I, you know what? I was I was like, okay, he's going M and M on. I was like, wow, <laughs> Yabu Smelly. But I mean, if you Yabu Smelly, what else are you gonna do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, what is like the guy? He well, he's just been you know fed this thing. He's got upside. He's got upside. We but, haven't really seen too much of it. His upside, but, you know. So I'm just saying, like, like a little attention grabber. He's Marcus, Marcus Smart with the with the clover haircut. I'm totally in on it, man. He's earning it on the court. But come on, man, you shouldn't be able to have vanity haircuts unless you're earning it. it reminds you know what me the of term pe peacocking means, right? Of course. You remember? Uh, yeah, you remember Robert Swift? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this guy's awesome. What a player. <laughs> Tattoos. Yeah, drug man. use. <laughs> <laughs> like Robert Swift. Swift. That guy should have kept it clean until he actually like you know earned it on the court. But there he was, the tattoos, funky hair. Come <clears> on, man. <laughs> There was actually a guy that we are lucky that Danny Ainge didn't have the opportunity to draft because he would have. That would be an interesting Danny, podcast where we just go through all the things that Danny was lucky that didn't actually happen. So there's like the right. Robert Swift. There's the uh, obviously the Justice Winslow. There's, there's another guy I'd probably trade for Gordon Hayward, Winslow. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon, if you're listening out there, man, I mean, we still love you. <laughs> He's not listening. Know, we're just 
we just would like some free video games or something, man. Like we just kind of feel like you're stealing from us a little bit. You know what I mean? Scott, I told you, man, nobody's listening to this one. They're all listening to the Celtics Reddit podcast right now. <laughs> no, no. Gordon Hayward is uh he's he's somehow <laughs> somehow somebody's gonna pass him along. It's like, man, you have to hear what these guys are saying about you, Gordon. It's it's awful. <laughs> All right, man. So what else is going on in your life, man? You still don't tell me anything about you. Yep. So each episode I do, I, I make a little uh, thumbnail. So I'm mm-hmm. going to have two Scots in this thumbnail. Who are the two most famous Scots of all time? Tell me. Ooh, let's see. There was F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> <laughs> right? You forget yeah. about that one. All right. <laughs> and, and let me see. Uh, the other famous Scott. It's tough, Ooh. man. I'm telling you. I've got. Here's what I got. I got uh, mm-hmm. Scott Bayo. <laughs> oh man, unbelievable talent! <laughs> Classic Scott. <laughs> and then we got. Uh, yeah. Let's see. We got Ridley Scott, but we're gonna go first names here. How about Scott Hamilton, 1984 Olympian who does the backflips on oh. skates? <laughs> yeah, really classic skater. After that, man, it's tough, man. You got uh, you got Scott Bakula from uh, Quantum yep. Leap. <laughs> It's true, man. How, well, how about George C. Scott? George C. Scott, he's up there. It is interesting. Yeah. I was just looking at this list here. We got uh, we got both Scott Kahn, son mm-hmm. of son of James Kahn, and Scott Eastwood, son of Clint Eastwood. So I think if you're oh, that's a great one. Yes, yeah, he, yeah, we do share the same sexuality. <laughs> I wonder if Kahn and Eastwood were ever in a movie. Just uh, just raw sex appeal. You're also forgetting about the guy Adam Scott, right? Who's in the Adam beer Scott. commercials? All right, that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, maybe we'll save Adam Scott for episode three of Scott Scott and Larbird Thirty Three. But uh, this one, I think I'm gonna have to go with. The, the ice skater and Bayo. <laughs> How about uh, Scott Weiland from one of my uh, favorite rock bands? Yeah, that's up there. And I also think uh, what maybe the uh, the lead singer of Creed. <laughs> he was a Scott. No, wasn't please, he? no, not him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Not that guy. That's about All as right, phony well, as it gets. What's some other stuff we can talk about in this episode? No one's listening to because they're listening to the Reddit okay, podcast. Okay, <laughs> um, hold on, hold on. I think I even made a quick note. Let's see. I'm just going through our notes on this podcast. You got one that says, "Does Rosier make Danny horny?" <laughs> Oh, that is a good. No, honestly, because if that's one guy that should go at the deadline, like like I said, like do the Pelicans really want Terry Rozier? Like, why isn't he getting something for his little butt buddy Terry Rozier? Honestly, like this is, you know, the the guy is. I mean, if, if we have Kyrie healthy, the guy is basically no use to us. You, you know the story. If he goes down like last year, then yeah, like Terry is perfect backup, but. I mean, I, I kind of think this year, aren't we hoping that uh, we have Kyrie available or we're not going anywhere? Yeah. I mean, that that is the thing. I think we were keeping I think we were keeping Rozier on the the thought that Kyrie could leave. But I don't know. Are you are you 100% convinced Kyrie is not leaving? Maybe we're going to need Rozier anyways. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, if, if Ky, let's put it this way. If Kyrie leaves Boston, I'm going to put him on my Tommy Heinsohn list of uh, we're going to have to beat this guy up in an alley, on a dark alley. So I don't the think Tim Hardaway list. <laughs> I don't think that Kyrie's leaving, but I think it, it is kind of funny that people are like, well, no, he promised everyone. He promised everyone in that. <laughs> he, gave, he, gave him, he gave him his flat earth word. Yeah, he said, he said in front of everyone, he's like, um, if you guys will have me, I'm going to stick around. But listen, like if, if Kyrie leaves after that, is it any different if he had just left anyways? He's going to be hated regardless. Like, why not just say I'm going to stay? He's still going to make his decision for him. I do think he's going to stay in Boston but who knows <laughs> what, what do you remember of the timing of that moment like wasn't it kind of odd timing that he came out and and it was i don't even know if it was did he tell anybody he just kind of announced it yeah. on everyone I, I don't know if you what you remember about that but it, it just it did seem a little bit odd that he was kind of forcing the situation and i don't he, know what that was all about there was a lot of buzz at the time asking whether or not Kyrie would leave it was something that probably would have held been held over the entire season as a distraction especially as we're struggling right now. So him coming mm-hmm. out and saying, yeah, I'm going to stay. I mean, it quiets people. I hope he's genuine. I really do. I don't know if he is. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. He is My, capable of being a little snake. I, I worry a little, I mean, I, I don't know how much I worry, but I, I just wonder what happens this summer and a team like the Knicks or something has the cap space and they can bring in Jimmy Butler or something. And he's looking at the opportunity of sticking around to play with Tatum and Hayward and Brown or going to the Knicks and playing with Porzingis and Butler it's still going to be a thing that's probably going to... You don't think there's any way that Durant would go join up with Kyrie and, and Butler in New York, do you? Well, that'd be hard to get all that, all that financially to work, but, I mean, Durant could go to the Knicks. It could happen. I, actually, I forgot about Zinger, so they don't even... Yeah, they don't need any Jimmy Butler. Yeah, just like Kyrie, Porzingis, and Durant would be awesome, theoretically. Yeah. 
I don't think it would happen. I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to be completely delusional and assume that Hayward's going to get healthy and assume that Kyrie's sticking yeah. around. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, Gordon Hayward's the worst basketball player in the league right now. Probably, probably bottom. What would you say? Bottom like ten percent. No man, he, <laughs> somewhere around there. At, at least out of he, out of guys playing at least twenty five minutes a game. What do you think he's in? Like just offensive, defensively. Where, where is he? Like bottom what percentage? Just guessing. <laughs> Do you, think, on, do you think? Do you think his defense? Do you think his defense is bad? It's yeah, like it's hard. I mean, like how he looked last night, man. Yeah. Just horrendous, horrendous on the perimeter, man. I mean, again, when he's actually in position, he can use he can use his size. He's not jumping very high, but I did see him block a shot the other day. He jumped like six inches off the ground. I was paying attention, <laughs> and he, but he, he got the block. Like I said, when he's in position, he's still six foot eight. He still can rebound. He can still raise his arms. <laughs> Yo, look, maybe he's tired. Didn't they just have another baby? Maybe he's been up all night with a baby oh, screaming. Well, that's like... the other thing. Gordon, I mean, <laughs> slow down, my man, man. 30 million per year. What does that break down to per game? <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? You, you know what we're gonna do? We'll just we're gonna finish off on the on the weirdest little math uh equation, right? So let's just say I give you one penny on the first of the month, okay? <laughs> all right. And the next day you were able to double that. Have you heard this? I think I've heard this at it, some point, yeah. In the next day, you double it. You have two pennies. Next day, four pennies. Next day, eight pennies. Sixteen pennies. Thirty-two pennies. Sixty-four. A dollar twenty-eight by what was that day? Six or seven. By thirty days, just you can do a couple calculations in your head. But what do you think you end up with in thirty days if you could double one penny thirty times? Oh man, I'm gonna say by day thirty there would be about twenty-eight thousand dollars. Whew. I'm gonna have to take the over. Ten point <laughs> seven million dollars. Wow, wow, my math sucks. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't suck. All you did was like you just were like, mm, and you just kind of guessed instead of yeah. But you keep, when you when you keep going down to twenty four thousand, forty eight thousand, all of a sudden you're like, wow, wait a minute, why can't we why can't we figure this out? <laughs> In real life, that'd be tremendous if I could have ten point seven million at the end of thirty days. Even if it was on a sports gambling thing, right? If we could somehow line up like twenty games in a row of sports gambling and that's it, we could check out. <laughs> it's a good plan. <laughs> so I tell you plan. <laughs> my cat's dying, I tell you about that. Yeah. Oh, this is tra- how old is it, first of all? Well, all right, so <laughs> The cat's pretty old. He's he's sixteen. Mm-hmm. But uh anyways, like the cat's got like early uh kidney disease. <laughs> okay. But he's actually doing better. We've been giving him injections. The thing is like the first day we had to give him you have to give him like fluid injections, right? Then you're supposed to just pull up the scruff and like stick the needle in the scruff. It's not supposed to hurt the cat. But like I've been I've been like terrified of needles my entire life. I one time got my blood drawn when I was twelve and I just kept thinking about the episode of Simpsons where Bart Simpson starts passing out because he gets his blood drawn and then I started like fainting myself. Jeez. So I've been terrified of needles <laughs> and my wife wasn't really too happy about him either. So we got the cat in the bathroom and we're like trying to do this whole thing where we're giving them the injection. The cat's freaking out. I don't like needles. So I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. My wife's shaking. And so she puts the needle in to the scruff, but uh, it was our first time doing it. The cat's not happy. So he's wiggling around and uh, what <laughs> the needle comes out and the liquid starts kind of squirting all over the cat. Mm-hmm. And I'm like having a panic attack. I'm like, oh crap, crap! And my wife is like, shit, 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 shit. Do something about it. So like, I try to reach for the cat. She's like, no, you idiot! Turn off the liquid. So I have to turn off the liquid. She's like, okay, let's do it again. I'm like, no, I don't want to do this again. This is awful. Let's like take it to the vet. And she's like, we can't afford it. Just do it again. Yeah. So, <laughs> meanwhile, the cat's like kind of running around, and I'm like, I'm trying to grab the cat, and she's like, just grab the cat. We'll do it again. So I reach down to grab the cat, and I impale myself on a needle. All right. And now, <laughs> now there's like blood coming out of my hand. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I just shared a, a needle with a cat. Is that a problem? Like, you have kitty cephalus. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like, no, you fucking idiot. You're gonna be fine. But anyways, we got, <laughs> we got the cat, some fluids. It's doing better. It's, you know, everything's yeah. kind of working on that, on that standpoint. But um. <laughs> all right, man. We've got, we've got to save people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're gonna include any of that. Uh, anything else you want to talk about with the Celtics, man? No, I think we covered it up, man. This is this is the Gordon Hayward month. Uh, we'll we'll see if this guy can get it in gear, man. But boy, I haven't given I up, man. Know, man. I haven't given this up. Is, Gordon Hayward, he's officially your boy. We haven't played the your boy, uh, my boy game, but <laughs> Gordon Hayward has to be one of your boys when we play that game. I'm in the Gordon Hayward corner by myself, and I think we should start we should start starting him and Jalen Brown together and just go for it, man. Just go for it. <laughs> 
Oh, we're God, not. No, we're no, never going to compete with Golden State with the starting lineup of Marcus Smart and Marcus Morris. We need to have our our theoretical five All Star lineup. Whether or not they get there or not, I don't know. But let's see if it happens. Well, yeah, I agree with you. Brown should probably be in there. <laughs> <laughs> so as far going. as I'll go. All right, man. All right. Well, it's good well, to talk well, to we're you. We're going to check in, check in on this again next month. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, Gordon Hayward ma- makes me eat my words. I'm praying. Believe me, I'm praying. And also, you say you hate the name strangers. You want me to call this something different? Should I call it the Scott Scott Pod? <laughs> Uh, absolutely, yeah. Super Scott Pod. <laughs> Maybe I should do something like, remember that old Dana Carvey show where they had uh, every episode was a different sponsor? It was like the Taco Bell Dana Carvey show, and then it was like the... <laughs> Joe Rogan goes with the Joe Rogan experience, so I just want to make a play on that, like the Larry Bird adventure, the Larry Bird, um, you know, <laughs> some, something. <laughs> Let's yeah. just, uh, over the experience, just something. Let's play, make a play on words. I would like to take down Joe Rogan. We'll, we'll ask the community and ask them what we should call this thing, but all right, man, <laughs> it's good to talk to you. <laughs> I'll talk, to you, awesome, I'll talk to you next month. Keep it real, buddy. All right, bye-bye. All right, so that was uh, episode five of the Scott Scott Podcast. Uh, please like and subscribe or dislike and subscribe if you like or dislike this video. All right, thank you. Bye.